good morning, it's Monday and welcome to Sabah's Way of Life. So today I am going to be reading book reading number three, Cellular Awakening. I'm still on the first chapter. The first chapter is Connecting with Inner Wisdom. Just to remind you all, this book is written by Barbara Wren. It was written in the 90s, I think, and that's important for me to tell you that because when you read it, you'll resonate with it and it was written all those years ago, 30 odd years ago. <clears throat> Barbara Wren was a nurse and then she set up a, um, a, a, a health school. Her view on the human body is totally different to mainstream medicine and even a lot of alternative. Her understanding of the metaphysical nature of who we are and the importance of light which, by the way, more and more individuals, doctors, scientists are becoming aware of. One of them is Dr. Jack Cruz. His work on light is phenomenal. But she's been talking about it for years. She's also a homeopath, a naturopath, um, an incredible woman. And um, I've read this book now three times. I also conducted a book reading back in 2021 and I keep coming back to it. So book reading number three, here we go. There is only one thing that will ever stop you from doing what you really want to and that is fear. So much attention is given to perpetuating fear in our modern society for it is a most effective way to control the masses. <clears throat> we fear poverty, ill health, war and terrorism and governments make sure we continue to give our attention to these things by telling us that they are declaring war on all that we fear. But fear is never released through fighting because war of any kind only serves to promote more fear. Perhaps it is time for us to choose to give our attention to what we want rather than what we don't want. Can you imagine how wonderful it must feel to have no fear? Wouldn't it be great to understand your own body so well that you could quickly and efficiently bring it into balance and harmony? Wouldn't it be fine to be able to live in full abundance on every level, to live the life of your dreams? If we can learn to release our fear, and connect to our inner wisdom, there is truly nothing that we cannot do. We are told that we use only 10% of our brain. Just imagine what we could achieve if we could illuminate the other 90%. Where would we go then in our development as a race and what would the world be like if we were able to sense it in this more expanded way? <clears throat> Happiness, health and freedom are the birthright of every person on this planet and are achievable by every person on this planet. No matter where you are in your life, no matter what your state of health or ill health, you have the potential to find happiness, health and freedom. As we learn to illuminate our potential, we become what to others might appear a walking miracle. No longer is any disease incurable, for we understand that all illness is totally and unequivocally curable from within, without any exception. No longer do we dread what the future holds, for we walk forever infused with an inner knowing that we are masters of our own destiny. This is what human potential is really about. It is about lighting up our lives in ever more wonderful and exciting ways. It is about daring to dream and then walking towards those dreams with open arms, free of fear. It is about being who we really are, 
who we know in our heart we were always meant to be. The biggest stress that we can experience is not being able to be who we are. And in order to be ourselves, we need to maintain the right connections with the earth and the universe to be in balance with all that is around us. This means matching our microcosm, that's the vibration we hold at a cellular level, with the macrocosm, which is the world about us. Something has been so negated in the teachings and reductionism of the West is the fact that we have a body, and I refer to this body as our vehicle. It is this vehicle that has the ability to manifest from within itself everything that is represented in the outer universe. But it is only when we are in a state of balance and harmony that we can truly tap into universal wisdom and make it our own at a cellular level. So much of our work together in this book will be about how to prepare our body, our vehicle, to receive and hold universal wisdom. How to treat the vehicle in order to be able to do this seems to me to be the most important aspect of health. When we talk about health, we are not talking about a lack of symptoms, but a deep connectedness to who we are and our place within the universe. This connectedness needs to unfold at a physical, emotional and spiritual level. Now currently in the West, these three aspects are not united, but are kept very separate. At one end, you have confusing and often contradictory information about how to maintain the physical body through nutrition, while at the other end, you have spiritual practices. As for our emotions, they receive precious little attention in any productive way. If you are having emotional problems, you might at best see a therapist and at worst be prescribed a suppressive drug that further cuts you off from who you really are. But it is our emotional journey that brings the physical and spiritual, spiritual together in unity. How you feel emotionally is without doubt the best possible indicator that you have of whether you are heading towards harmony or disharmony. If you, it is your guide to the fulfillment of your dreams. When you feel good, you know you are heading in the right direction. When you feel bad, you know that you are heading away from the life you really want. If you consistently seek out better feelings, your vehicle will transport you on the adventure of a lifetime to places beyond your dreams. When we talk about connecting with our feelings, we are not talking about contacting our inner anger, guilt, disappointment and fear. We're talking about correcting or connecting both with our inner wisdom and with our macrocosm. Our planet goes through many cycles of change and we are intrinsically linked to these cycles. Learning to be aware and feel these changing cycles allows us to bring ourselves into harmonious union with Mother Earth. Whether we are aware of them or not, we feel every change in the Earth at a cellular level. Now, when we can navigate these changes successfully, all is well. But when we fall out of harmony with these changes, then dis-ease is manifested. We are also intrinsically linked to the changes that occur outside our planet. Everybody knows that the moon has a strong influence on the water on this planet. But what many have forgotten 
is that we are predominantly made up of water. And so the moon has a strong influence upon us. All of the planets in our solar system exert their influences upon us as they go through their orbits, affecting different organs and minerals within our vehicle. I have known this fact for many years and it has proved very useful, especially when trying to connect people with what is unfolding within their own vehicles at different times. For example, I had a gentleman come to see me as a patient and during my consultation with him, I asked him if he suffered from headaches. He said that he had had in the past, but after seeing one of my former students who suggested he drink four pints, that's two and a half litres of water a day, the headaches had disappeared. Now, he had not had a headache since then until very recently when he had an unexpected migraine. I stopped him at this point and said, that I felt I knew the exact day on which that would have occurred and I told him the day and he was amazed that I was correct. Now, I was able to do this because I was aware of several interconnected facts. I knew that migraines and the liver were intrinsically linked and that the planet Mars had a strong energetic influence upon the liver. I also knew that in its orbit around the sun, Mars had recently come into close proximity to the Earth and so I chose the day when it had been at its closest and therefore had its strongest influence. Now if this patient had been aware of this information prior to seeing me he might well have been able to support his liver with an appropriate technique and that will be discussed in another chapter later on. And so avoiding and so avoided experiencing this migraine. Even if he had been unable to do this, this migraine would have no longer been an unexpected and unexplainable occurrence. Nothing happens in the universe by chance. Everything is part of an unfolding and interconnected process. So that's the end of um, today's book reading, book reading number three. We're still on the introduction here. And when Barbara um, writes, she writes as if she, she was speaking, which is why it's so easy for to read and um, accessible to those who perhaps aren't used to reading or um, find it difficult to understand more challenging um, diction. So it's, it's really a book that anybody can can buy and read um, even a, a, a young child who's used to used to reading. Um, the other thing is uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that when you're listening to this book reading really put down close up all your current perceptions on health and all your other judgments you have on different areas of study for example astronomy, astrology, because everything that we hear today is not really the essence of what these um, subjects really talk about and how they interconnect with everything. The most important thing is to understand that we're not separate, we're not in part. So she said our emotional and our physical today are kept separate. There's a spiritual side and there's a health side, but they're not, that, that's not true. They're all interlinked. They're all connected. Everything is connected. And many a time, um, even myself, who spent so many years reading on this, it's still having been conditioned in such a way um, and living in such a way which was so far from harmony. Myself. I chose that, really believing it was the right thing to do. But the point is, it's very hard then to change that perception and it does take constant work. But the one thing that we must all do is remove the distraction. Every distraction, television, media, there 
is by design the idea to distract you and for you to focus on the bandwidth of technology to remove you and, and take the essence of your hum humanness away so that you don't link to who you are so you can then be controlled to so try very hard to remove yourself from technology and link to the bandwidth of the principles of nature and I'm not just talking about the trees and the birds and the bees Yes, that is nature, but it's nature's principles as defined by the mind behind the universe. God, you can call it. You want to link to that frequency. You want to be around that frequency. That is so important. Especially important if you're living in regions where technology and artificial intelligence are the main theme of its existence. Humanoid, we are growing humanoid population at the moment, that's a fact. And the few of us that can pull ourselves away, it's a growing few, they're growing all the time, and link to nature's principles, our own principles, which linking to nature's principles is defined by the the law of love, um, and, and I'm not talking, you know what love I'm talking about, the real love of who we are. Everything stems from love. It's, it's not about being nice. It's about being kind, first of all, to ourselves. But that frequency, kind means doing the right thing, not pleasing other people. Doing the right thing, because that is being kind. Even if it means saying something that someone doesn't want to hear, but it's the right thing to do. That's kindness. That's a huge act of kindness. Obviously, you need to do it in the right way. But what I'm saying is the more of us that do that, the, that frequency and that vibration will will. It's far, far stronger than the technological frequency and it has the ability to impact others' hearts. So keep listening and just, just if there's one message for today is to remove yourself from distraction. And again, I'm going to say it again, spend time in silence and just breathe and just spend time in silence and go out. The sun is out today, just a little bit, and I'm getting right out there because we've had miserable days here in the UK. Get out into the sun. It's the most important component. The sun, oxygen and water. Have a lovely day.